Hello. Um, today we'll be reading chapter 15 of Bubble. Um, I apologize. I'm a little bit sniffly. I just have really bad allergies since it's been so nice out. Um, the last chapter we saw Amir and um, we saw Amir and his family um, do the FaceTime kind of with him. And he, Joe didn't really like get to meet them officially, but it was like over a camera that Amir was wearing and then there was a picture of Joe and uh, it was really special for him because he got to kind of like see Amir's home and meet his family but he wants to meet them in person someday so he's hoping that will happen. Um, so that's where we were last chapter now we're on 15. 11 years, 3 months, and 7 days. It's 9 o'clock in the morning and the doctors have already come and gone. They think I'm getting better. My whites are back up over 3,000 and my temperature is going down. I feel better too. I can walk around the room without holding onto my bed, and they're letting me go to the toilet without having a nurse having to wait outside. Dr. Moore said he thinks the worst is over. He smiles and ruffles my hair when he says that. Then he looks at my screens and shook his head. Young man, he said, you might be feeling better, but I think you should give your eyes a rest. I will, I said. I won't. I've been watching the screens all week. First, I watched all my favorite films, one after the other. I watched Thor beat up Loki and throw him off a cliff. I watched Captain America, The Falcon, and Black Widow take down Hydra, and Greg came and sat with me and watched Spidey stop the lizard. The next day, I searched through all the channels, but all I could find was the news from other countries in the world and talk shows with people shouting at each other in languages I couldn't understand. I've been watching the CZTV, too. The men digging the road outside have passed the hospital doors and are on their way to Starbucks. It's gotten so hot that they bought in huge floodlights so that they can work at night. Two days ago, a truck delivered three massive rolls of copper. Amir said it's to increase the magnetic field so the alien ship can hover and not actually touch the ground. He says it's called Maglev. I looked it up on my laptop. It didn't say anything about aliens or spaceships, but there's a railway being built with the magnets to propel trains in Japan. The doors click open. I pick up the remote. Greg walks in and glances at the screens. An excavator jerks along the road, lower its claws, and digs at the ground. Mate, come on. You've got to get dressed sometime. He puts clean clothes on the back of my chair. I like it. I know, but you don't have to watch this. No, I press screen 8. Greg laughs. The picture changes to the hospital door. The woman at the reception is outside talking to the security guard. I think he's going to ask her out, I say. He walked her to the end of the road last night. Mate, Keith's been walking Julie to the end of the road for months. He's not going to ask her out. It's just an excuse for him to have another cigarette. But he brought her a kebab. Ha, huh, well, she's bound to say yes then. The screen, Keith says something I can't hear. Julie laughs. I can't hear that either, but she's still smiling when I switch to screen three and she sits back down at her desk. Greg wasn't supposed to know about the CZTV, but one night I fell asleep and he came in and saw Jim reading his book. I thought my screens would be taken away, but Greg said he won't tell anyone. I still have to turn the screens, off, oh, screens over if anyone else comes in. Amir is trying to find some sensor sensors that will turn them off when my eyelids drop. His brother is working on it. He thinks he can get me one of the eye sensors that soldiers use to fire guns on war si zone simulators. I press channel 12. A laundry van arrives and back backs up to the back of the building. Two men get out and slide through the back doors. Mate, I look up. Greg standing by the door. I said, I'll be back to in to watch football later, and don't forget about your documentary you will be on. The two men load bags of laundry into the back of the van. I think the young one has a girlfriend because he's in the back of the van texting on his phone. Or maybe he has a best friend that sends him texts all the time. The older man throws a bag and says something. The young man shakes his head and puts his phone in his pocket. My laptop beeps. It's Henry. He's been quiet. His doctors and the people from NASA have been building up his energy level, so he's been walking around his room, getting to use his suit. Hey, Joe, what are you doing? Watching people in the street. You're crazy. It's good. Better than real TV. Better than the Avengers Assemble? No, not that good. How are you? I'm okay. Boots are okay, too. Helmet's a bit small. Face looks like a watermelon. Ha. Huh. My folks are coming today. Last time, Dad can see me before I go to the mall. Have you got your suit yet? No, I don't think Amir meant it. Hasn't he done anything? Not really. Just checked my trainer size and label inside my pajamas. NASA measured me up with lasers and stuff, but if your sneakers and pajamas fit, it's kind of the same thing. I'm not sure. Maybe it's a joke. No, Amir's not mean. 
Exactly, so it's true. Where'd you like to go? Empire State Building. Hang out with Spidey. Ha, be great. Shame it's in New York. Yeah. Hey, it's only in the next state. You could pop over and see me. Ha. Huh. You told anyone you're going out? No, don't want to worry, Beth. And Amir said if anyone found out, he could lose his job. True. Did he say where you were going? Not really. He just said there's a mall in Enfield. Most of the time, he just watches the planes. Weird. Do hope it's true. Me too. Hey, my folks just arrived. I'll get off. No, it's okay. Go to screen. We turn the cameras on. I see Henry smiling and hear the sound of people talking. Henry turns his laptop around. His mom and dad are standing by the door wearing white overalls. They wave at me and smile. Henry's mom's got blonde hair like Henry and his dad is going bald. Henry says he's, it's because he worries about paying for the hospital treatment so much. Henry's room and treatment aren't free like mine. To begin with, his parents had some insurance, but it wasn't enough. So now his dad has to work away from home for months on an oil rig near Nova Scotta in Canada. It's a long way from Philadelphia. It takes five hours on the plane. His dad looks so tired, and I think he might have just gotten it off of it. They smile and wave, and I wave back. They walk over to Henry, tell him they've missed him and love him. Henry opens his arms and says he loves them too, and they hug for a long time. It's like they've forgotten I'm here, but I don't care, because if my mom and dad could come and visit me, I would hug them for a long time too. Eventually, they will pull away. Where's man, I ask. Don't think he's here, Joe, said Henry. I hear someone giggling. Henry turns the camera toward the ground. His brother is crouched at the end of his bed. Pow! He points his finger at me, pretending he's got a gun in his hand. I clutch my hand into my chest and fall back in my bed. You got me, I say. Henry laughs. You can't shoot Joe. He's a superhero. He can catch bullets between his fingers, even if they travel at the speed of light. Matt and I laugh. I haven't seen Henry's brother for three months. He's half of Henry's age and half as big, but his face is so chubby it fills almost the whole screen. I turn my laptop around. Hey, Matt, I've got something to show you. I flick the TV monitors on. Wow, how'd you get all of those? My nurse, I say. He brought them in for me a while when I was sleeping. Matt's face breaks into a grin. It's cool. Hey, Mom, Joe's got 12 TVs. Henry's mom's smiling face creeps into the edge of the screen. That's nice. Can I get more in my bedroom? No, Matt, she says. I think one TV is enough. Matt sticks out his lip and I laugh. I wish I had a brother. I love Beth, but it'd be great if I had a brother, too. I wonder if he would look like me. We could play together in our backyard and run down the road and buy candy at the corner store. We could eat them at the play and pretend war and on our way home. We could be the Green Goblin, and I would chase him after he zigzagged across the road on his hoverboard, and I'd catch him in my webs, and we'd both nearly die laughing as we rolled on the ground. But Mom and Dad thought it was too risky to have another kid, just in case he had the same disease as me. There was a 50% chance that it would. I wish they would have, though. Henry's mom and dad were told the same. Sometimes when he annoys Henry, Henry tells me Matt was a mistake. I think he's a good mistake. The camera wobbles as Henry carries the laptop across the room and puts it down on the table. He sits down on the chair. His mom and dad sit on the sofa. Henry's dad leans forward and moves the screen. That okay, Joe? The picture moves to the left. Matt's sitting on the arm of the sofa, picking his nose. I laugh. They all look at the camera and smile. It's like I'm in the middle of a circle. I love it when they come to visit Henry and they come to visit me as well. Sometimes Henry talks to Beth when she visits. It's good, but it's not the same if I had a bigger family to share. Henry's mom is the first one to speak. She is wearing bright red lipstick when she talks. She looks at everyone just to make sure they're listening. I've got a new job, she says, at a new accounting firm that just opened in town. They seem like good people, but I don't know how I got it. I thought I was too old, but I guess I can make good coffee and I can type 120 words a minute. Yeah, and unfortunately she talks that fast too, says Henry's dad. We all laugh. Henry's mom tries to be quiet, but it's not long before she starts talking again. She tells us her car broke down last week on the highway, which is American for motorway, but she didn't mind too much because the tow truck guy looked like Tom Cruise. Henry's dad says he's not sure we want to hear all of that, but all she does is smile and then start talking again about the tow truck driver and then about a cat on the street that died after climbing into a tumble dryer. Everyone's Eventually, she looks around the room. Okay, she says. I guess it's someone else's turn. She looks at Matt and reaches into his pocket and pulls out a piece of paper and holds it up to the camera. Things I did. He turns the list and reads it to me. My boat sank in the lake. I lost my bike. I found $10. I brought a hamster. I fell over in the mall, did this. He rolls his trousers and shows the scab on his knee. Went to the movies, got a transformer, spoke to Dad on Skype, spoke to Henry on Skype. Lost my hamster, late for school, got a lock for the cage, got a new hamster, drew a T-Rex, packed stuff to go see Henry and Joe, the end. 
The dad smiles and puts his arm around Matt's shoulders. I wait for someone to ask Matt questions about his list, but they don't. I think they've already spoken to him about it, and the list was just written for me. I hear a door slide open. Henry's mom walks in front of the camera, then comes back a few minutes later and puts two cups of coffee down on the table. She looks at Henry. He smiles at her. Then looks in my direction like she wants to say, he wants to say something, but all he does is shrug. I do the same. It's weird how we could talk to each other all night and all day, but we can't think of anything to say when other people are around. Henry's dad leans forward and picks up a cup of coffee. Hey, Joe, Henry says you might be going outside, too. Sorry, Joe, just slipped out. Oops, sorry, Joe, didn't know it was a secret. This guy's going to the mall. Where are you off to? Hey, Shrug, it seems silly to talk about where I'm going. Amir hasn't told me anything. We don't have any plans. Henry knows what he's doing. He's had a timeline mapped out for months. I don't know. I could tell you where I would want to go in my head, though. Yeah, Joe, said Henry. Tell us of one of your dreams of superhero things. Start with the soccer guy. I smile and look at Theo Walcott. I'd love to play football with him, and after the game at Wembley, he'd shake my hand and give me one of his shirts to show me around the dressing room. And I'd meet the rest of the team on the screen. Everyone is waiting for me to speak, but I feel nervous and I don't say anything interesting. My dream is to go to London and meet Beth at Covert Garden. She likes a cafe there. I don't know the name, but she says it's inside the market by the clock. I'd get Greg to text her, say she needs he needs to talk to her about me. But he wouldn't be there, it'd be me. I'd walk up behind her when she's drinking coffee and reading her book, and I'd tap her on the shoulder and make her jump. Then she'd give me a massive hug. I stopped talking. Mom's, Henry's mom smiles at me. Go on, Joe, what happens next? I don't know, but she always says she'd like to go to London Eye. Do you know the route? She she says it's like she says it like route. Sorry, the the route. Do you know the the way? Oh yes, I've I've done it on Google Earth loads of times. It's in my head. But don't take the subway, says Henry. You want to go underground after being stuck in your room your whole life. We all laugh. Maybe we could all meet her. I say we could go to her house. Is it near the hospital? No, not now. She's gone to Edinburgh. It's miles away. Henry's mom. Rests her head against her husband's shoulder. I wait for Henry or Matt to say something, but they all just sit there looking at me. I look down at the floor. I didn't go to Beth's house before she moved. It was only two miles away. I've seen pictures of it when she was there with her friends, but that's just pictures of people sitting on the sofa watching TV or drinking in the kitchen. If I visited her, I, I wouldn't want anyone else there. I'd just like to sit on the sofa by her side, eat dinner, and watch TV, but I can't do that. It's silly to think I could. I hear a sniff and I look up. Henry's mom is smiling but wiping a tear from her eye at the same time. I'm sorry, I say. Henry's mom wipes her nose on her sleeve. You good, Joe, says Henry's dad. Yes, I'm just a bit tired now. Not surprised, says Henry. You've been all the way to Traflagar Square and back again. I smile. Think I might get some rest. Okay. They all wave and shout goodbye. I pick up my phone and text Beth. Miss you. A minute later, she replies. What made you send that? No reason. Just felt like it. I'm on my way to work. I'm lying in bed. I've been talking to Henry. But he's excited about the mall. He is. My fingers hover over the keypad. I want to tell her that Amir is taking me out too, but she'd tell me not to go. She might even tell the nurses. But she'd want what I wanted, wouldn't she? I press the keys. I've got something to tell you. Don't worry about me, but I'm going outside too. My thumb is over the send key. Gotta go. I shake my head. I don't want her to worry. I take a deep breath and press delete. Okay. I'll text again after work. X. X. I sign hold my phone down by my side. On the screens, the workmen are still digging the trench and the traffic lights are changing from red to green. On the bottom of the screen, I see someone on the roof of the building. It's the man in coveralls. He slides his bag over his shoulder, reaches in, and pulls out a knife. I didn't think he had pigeons on our roof. They damage buildings and carry disease. They get trapped in the cooling towers and the disease could come through the tubes and the vents. But the vents have got filters and my machines have got sensors. I look up at the air conditioning unit. The blades turn down toward me and the air blows in. The germs could be getting in right now. I close my eyes and take a deep breath. How can I even think of going outside when I'm scared of catching a disease in here? I take another deep breath and open my eyes. The man walks between the cooling towers. I pick up the remote and turn off the screen. So that's the end of chapter 15.